Good morning, Morio Cho. Today's question of the day is When is a new JoJo game coming? No, not a new mobile game, not a Roblox game either, an actual game for consoles. A new JoJo game is long overdue, with the last one, Eyes of Heaven, releasing almost four years ago in 2015. And while that was great for fan service, it's not really a fighter, it doesn't even have local multiplayer. All Star Battle released six years ago in 2013, and while that game wasn't bad, it's a 2.5D CyberConnect 2 fighter. I mean, it's 30 frames per second, and it left a sour taste in quite a few people's mouths. So I asked you all on Twitter what you would like from a new JoJo fighter, and most of you said, well, we just want heritage for the future with characters from other JoJo parts. And I mean, of course you would. Heritage for the future, while a bit broken, has honestly great mechanics and gameplay. And if updated just a bit, the system would still work today. But guys, that was over 20 years ago. The last time, in many people's opinions, that we had a truly great JoJo JoJo game in terms of gameplay was 20 years ago. The demand is high for a new JoJo game with gameplay as interesting as Heritage for the Future. What do I personally want for system mechanics for a new JoJo fighter? Well, either a team-based game or a solo game could be interesting, I can't really choose between the two. With a solo game, the focus would be on giving each individual character a bunch of tools of their own to play around with, which sounds perfect for a JoJo game. But also, a game with assists would be kind of perfect too. Consider all the cool times in JoJo that stand powers have interacted with each other, and you can see why playing a team-based JoJo game would be cool as well. It could really go either way and I'd be happy with it. However they choose to do the characters is okay with me. But JoJo has a lot of characters. There are so many fan-favorite characters that people want to see become full-fledged fighting game characters, it seems like a very lofty task to undertake. It's a miracle that All-Star Battle even exists, honestly, and that doesn't even have all the characters JoJo fans want, but since this is my video, what characters would I want in a new JoJo's game, and what ideas do I have for them? First off, let's start off with a character from Heritage for the Future, and see why that game worked. Dio. Dio in Heritage for the Future is pretty legendary and a great example of how well a JoJo character can be ported to a fighting game. The Knives Super, <laughs> so good. The Road Roller, ah man, how legendary. The Time Stop, ugh. <laughs> He's not perfectly designed, I mean, what the hell is the point of this move? But still, he's a pretty good reference point for what I'm looking for in a fighting game JoJo character. Dio in Heritage for the Future has a considerably high skill curve, and rightfully so, I mean, he's Dio. Let's also not forget Shadow Dio though, which is pretty dang easy. The move I'm most impressed with by Shadow Dio though is this unique counter move that teleports Shadow Dio behind the opponent and freezes time for a little bit to allow Shadow Dio to start a combo. This is a cool move because it, it does something unique, it's satisfying to pull off, and it's a reference taken straight from the manga. Basically, it gives you a cool interaction. So why do I find Dio in All-Star Battle more boring? Compare the Road Roller Super in All-Star Battle to the Road Roller Super in Heritage for the Future. The Road Roller Super in All-Star Battle is essentially just a hit and a cutscene. Like most other supers in the game, it's just an attack, but we both have to sit through a long cutscene. And while it might be cool at first, it's kind of boring and even gets annoying after a while. The Road Roller Super in Heritage though is kind of exciting. Side <laughs> Good enough. Good enough. Yes! <laughs> Consider what happens here, the opponent player is able to act all throughout the super animation. Dio rises ominously without a ton of visual or audio hints, there's no sound effect here, he just rises above the screen. And then suddenly, a cut in appears and Dio yells, ROAD ROLLER DIE, and slams a road roller down the tracks onto the opponent. The thing is, the opponent has full control during this whole move. They're able to see Dio rising and say, oh shit, it's coming, and have to block in time when the road roller comes down. Sometimes he can even be ambiguous and you don't even realize it's coming until the super flash. And Road Roller is 
kind of easy to block if time isn't stopped. There are some hard and niche ways to combo into it, but other than that, the only real way to guarantee get this is to time stop beforehand. So when you do manage to time stop and road roller, the opponent loses the ability to interact with you that they used to have. This is exciting. It leads to some laughs and some real feelings of satisfaction when the road roller hit. Why? Because this is an interaction. The road roller super in all star battle is pretty much just a big hit that's a cutscene. It's not very exciting. The ability to interact with the road roller super in Heritage for the Future, while it seems kind of minute, makes a big difference. It makes it feel like a unique move with unique properties and a unique way to interact with it and both players feel in control of that interaction. In Heritage, you're not watching a cutscene, you're playing a cutscene. In a way, it basically feels like a mini game. While it is a simple mini game of once you see me coming down with a road roller, just block, it's still interactive. This is what makes JoJo characters in Heritage interesting. It really makes you feel like you did a road roller. It doesn't just show you. Some people might say that a new JoJo game would be a terrible idea because the characters in JoJo are too unique and you can't possibly turn some of these crazy ideas into fighting game characters. An attempt to do so will result in an oversimplification of abilities like an all-star battle, but Heritage for the Future has shown us that that's not necessarily true. Jojo is not a terrible fit for a fighting game. Jojo is a perfect fit for a fighting game because of the focus on strategy and how characters use the tools they have and unique ways to fulfill win conditions. This article misses the whole point of fighting games by saying fights come out to who's stronger. Fighting games aren't like that at all. They're all about each character's unique tool and decision making, which is what JoJo's is all about. But the article is right in that All Star Battle kind of fails to make JoJo as interesting as it should be, as I already exemplified with the Road Roller Super. But maybe we can fix that with a few tweaks. Next, before we go on to new characters, let's look back at another great character from Heritage for the Future. Whole Horse. Yes, Whole Horse's super where he shoots the screen is cool too. That's just a cutscene, right X? Well actually, that is also similar to the Road Roller super. Let's examine what happens here. Whole Horse shoots three times on the screen and if one of the shots hit the opponent, the opponent gets slashed by Jay Gal as Whole laughs. The startup is not a cutscene, but rather a unique way of hitting the opponent, just like the Road Roller Super. So this is cool because, well, it's badass. It showcases the great chemistry and juxtaposition of the two. Whole Horse's cheekiness and Jay Gal's edgy seriousness really go well together. It showcases really well the trickster nature of Whole Horse's character. Whole Horse's special move where he calls out Jay Gal from the ground is one of the coolest moves in fighting games in my opinion, because it's a trap tool, mainly used for frame traps and setups and then can be comboed out of by Hole. Hole laughs as you fall into his trap, which is cool because you actually fell for a trap in the game, so he's laughing at you for doing so. Jay Gal then says, now shoot, and Hole Horse says, I I sir, when you throw out a bullet. <laughs> This is a cool interaction. It really shows the chemistry of the characters, how their standability works. They really managed to make Whole Horse feel like how he's supposed to feel by making him a trickster character that can cowardly run away but also frustrate you by trapping you. And both players have a feeling of control over this interaction. But anyways, back to the super, we established that it feels fun to play as Hole because he really plays like a scumbag and it shows in both how he plays and how it looks. This super kind of sucks to throw out raw. Like the Road Roller Super, it's really easy to block. Once the opponent sees the Super Flash, they just gotta block and Hole can be punished. The only real way you can get this is if you combo into it from a move like Whole Horse's J Guile special. You kind of have to earn this move by trapping your opponent first. When Hole laughs here, it's not just something he's doing, you're also doing it in your mind by the time you land this Super. This is the kind of move I'm looking for. It makes a match funny. I want a move that makes you go, oh shit, I landed that when you see it. Not a move that makes you go, oh shit, I did a big hit that will do some damage, you gotta sit through this long cutscene again. Because a lack of interaction makes a game boring. And so that's the kind of design philosophy I'll be basing my ideas on. So first off with the new characters, some missed opportunities in All-Star Battle. Diavolo. It is criminal that they did not create a super similar to Dio's time stop for Diavolo's time skip. But X, how would you even implement Diavolo's time skip? That seems like a really big task. I mean, Epitaph Epitaph looks 10 seconds into the future. How can you imp even implement that into a game going in real time? I mean, you can't 
actually look into the future? That's nuts. Or can you? So let's look at the mechanics of King Crimson and Epitaph. So basically, Epitaph looks 10 seconds into the future, seeing the result of what happens in 10 seconds. King Crimson can create an erase time in this 10 seconds, where only he can move and he can see the future movements of his opponents. He is not allowed to interact with the opponent here, but he is able to set things up and create an advantageous position for himself once the erase time ends. By the end of the erase time, the victims do not remember what happened in the erase time. Okay X, but how can this be ported to a fighting game? How can you be able to predict the future? How can you force your opponent to move in a way that you know how they're gonna move? That's impossible. Okay, so here's here's my idea for how this move goes. Starting at maybe 5 bars, Diavolo is able to input a command similar to Dio's time stop. Once this command is input, there's a very little visual indication, no audio indication, just something very small enough to let the player know okay I input the command correctly like maybe a small flash or something but keep it kind of hidden from the opponent so let's say you activated this move at five bars so once you input this command the match goes on normally for five seconds until it is revealed that Diavolo was actually looking five seconds into the future through epitaph then those five seconds that you and the opponent already experienced the opponent repeats their motions in slow motion and also have red silhouettes that show their future movements now this is awesome as fuck and if you land this in a match your opponent's probably going, aw shit, and you're going, haha, take that idiot. But also remember that Diavolo cannot interact with the opponent during the erase time, but he can set things up and put himself in an advantageous position once time resumes as normal. So you know what, let's make Diavolo be sort of a set play character maybe. Think about it, this is perfect for a character like Diavolo whose ability revolves around not being able to hit the opponent directly and instead setting up things and traps for the opponents. Let's make one of his moves maybe a blood spur where he throws blood in your face. In real time, this is a somewhat slow command grab that stuns the opponent for a little bit. However, in a race time, Diavolo can set these up without having to worry about missing. Let's say we know the opponent is going to end up in the air at the end of the erase time. So we'll set up some blood where they're going to end up and then go behind them. Voila! The opponent is stunned once time resumes. But maybe that's still overpowered. Even though it is 5 bars, you're essentially giving Diavolo a guaranteed command grab he can get at any time. Maybe we can just make it a regular blockable mid for a meaty once the opponent is out of a race time, which is pretty okay in itself since it's a reversal safe meaty and you can get a mix up right after. But what if I want something a little janker? I mean, I am spending 5 meters to skip time and you're telling me all I can get is a guaranteed safe meaty? For another setup move, how about a move that, let's say, pulls up a fence, similar to uh, the one from this scene. Spoilers. This move can be a low attack. In real time, Diavolo can't move during the animation. However, in a race time, he can set it up so it comes up once time resumes. This can be used in tandem with an overhead attack once time resumes for an unblockable situation. Though even if he is only able to set up a mid safe meaty in a race time, that's still really good even if it is 5 bars. Think about the applications of this move. If Diavolo is about to die and he inputs this and then he dies in the erase time, this is pretty much a way to undo the death and turn that into an advantage advantageous situation for him. It would be very much worth it to save up your super meter in order to turn the tides at the last second. This could also be used to extend combos and do resets. You activate this in the middle of a combo or right before a combo, your opponent gets comboed for about 5-10 to 10 seconds, then time goes backward, the opponent is still getting hit during the erase time, then once time resumes, they're still in hit stun, you can either go for a reset or extend the combo. This idea isn't perfect or fully fleshed out, but you can see what I'm going for here. Diavolo has the potential to be a super interesting and scary character with a ton of unique interactions. Also, as a final note, let's change this super from All-Star Battle up a bit. Instead of making this counter animation grand, let's just make it kind of ambiguous. And let's not even make it cost any super meter. Let's base it off of Shadow Dio's book counter, but with a little twist. Instead of doing this startup cutscene, how about we just have Diablo do some quick pose that isn't a cutscene. And when the opponent hits Diavolo, it shows that they actually hit themselves, and then Diavolo appears behind them, and time is frozen for just a little bit to allow Diavolo to potentially combo off the opponent's hit, or do some sort of setup off of it. This is cool because not only did we get rid of the overly long cutscene and made the startup more ambiguous, and yeah, we also made it look cooler by making it naturally look like the opponent hit themselves, but think about what we're doing here. We're comboing off the opponent's own hit. The opponent started their own combo on themselves. 
if that isn't badass, I don't know what is. With these tweaks to Diablo, trying to make him more of a set play character and also giving him a really cool time stoppy like move, I feel like we could really adapt King Crimson in an interesting way. Next up. Koichi Hirosei. I don't want to dwell too much on this one, obviously Koichi's Act 2 state would let him do a ton of shit, but it's the Act 3 state that I think would definitely be interesting. Act 3 pushes the opponent down on the ground, that's his ability. This is kind of perfect for a fighting game, considering that getting knocked down is a key part of every match. Koichi I think would be a strongly Okazeme based character. Let's say that every character in this theoretical Jojo fighter has different wake up speeds. In Heritage this was a big deal because that meant some characters characters with slow wake up speeds like Joseph and Kakyoan were able to get infinite loot since you had more time to set up things. I don't think we should keep the game that jank, but let's say that Koichi with the ability of 3 freeze is able to ignore that and manipulate your wake up speed. For example, let's make one of Koichi's combo enders a punch or something from Act 3. For as long as Koichi holds the button, the opponent is stuck knocked down on the ground. Obviously Koichi couldn't do this forever because then he could just wait out the timer, but let's make it a reasonable amount of time. Acts 1 and 2 will give Koichi setup tools for strong Okazeme. I mean Koichi can literally do anything he wants with Act 2's ability to be honest, so I don't want to make up specific stuff. Just know that I'm seeing him as centering around strong Okazeme. Also maybe he doesn't have much damage output or health overall to make up for it. Now for Kira Yoshikage. I actually don't dislike how Kira is done in All-Star Battle. I think he might need a lot of tweaking. Obviously he needs tweaking to be a bit more freeform and faster to fit the heritage gameplay style, but I like the idea here. I like how we can use Stray Cat's bubble, but one big tweak I want is with Bites the Dust. All-Star Battle's Bites the Dust is kinda cool, but not that cool. In fact, it kinda gets annoying. One big thing is the animation is too fucking long, please shorten it. Also, it doesn't really do much. It's a slow unblockable projectile that does 200 damage, adds 10 seconds to the clock, and restores Kira's health by like 200. For the ultimate move of a character, this is kind of not very cool or unique. So let's make it like this. Let's make it a counter that uses up a ton of super meter, can only be activated towards, I don't know, 50 seconds in if we're working with a 99 second timer for a round. Let it only be able to be activated late in the round. And when this counter is activated, the opponent explodes and the match goes back to the beginning of the round and both characters are back to full health and one super meter. Basically, you're redoing the round. This can only be used once in a match. So for example, let's say it was activated when the timer was at 35 seconds. Now if the opponent is unable to defeat Kira by the time the timer hits 35 seconds, they die and Kira wins that round. This essentially turns into a game of trying to time out the opponent and the timer is shortened. This isn't necessarily unheard of in fighting games, but X, that sounds kinda overpowered still. I mean, unlike in other timeout situations, Kira doesn't even need the life lead, he just needs to still be alive by 35 seconds and it's an instant kill. So let's unoverpower it a bit. In the Bites the Dust arc, Hayato is able to overcome Bites the Dust by making Kira have to call back Killer Queen before Rohan dies. So we can say that, while Bites the Dust is active, Kira cannot use Killer Queen. Yes, while Bites the Dust is active, Kira will not be able to use any of his moves that involve Killer Queen, locking him out of a majority of his moveset. He will not be able to use special moves, he'll not be able to grab, he doesn't have a stand mode, his damage output gets lower, he'll just lose access to a lot. And notably, he will not be able to use his stand to block, meaning he will take take chip damage, and let's also make it so that he can die by chip. However, at any time before the timer reaches 35, Kira can input something and say, Killer Queen return, and have access to everything again, but Bites the Dust is deactivated. Suddenly, this makes this a lot less one-sided and more like an interesting minigame, an interesting interaction. Kira can choose to try his chances to survive until the timer hits that point, but it's going to be a little difficult. The opponent has a huge advantage in this situation since Kira loses not just many offensive tools, I mean, he's not going to be able to camp out the opponent here. But his defensive tools are bad too. Think about it, you know those reversals and mashing you like to do to get out of pressure? Kira loses access to reversals without Killer Queen. And not only that, but he takes chip damage and you can die by chip. Your defense is kind of really bad in this situation. If your opponent has good block pressure, it doesn't matter if they can't open you up, you're probably going to want to call back Killer Queen. We're obviously going to remove his ability to guard cancel too. Now, are we also going to 
get rid of push blocking for Kira as well when he doesn't have Killer Queen. Maybe that's a bit overboard, we can't really tell how much we want to balance it unless this is an actual game and we can test it out. But also Kira has the option to give up on trying to win this way and can call back Killer Queen anytime before Bites the Dust activates. So at the very least, this is still a strong option even if you don't want to win by timing out your opponent. If your opponent has a really strong lead and you don't think you can come back, you can consider activating Bites the Dust to return to the beginning of the round to try again. And usually this will give you a disadvantageous state since you don't have Killer Queen. But as soon as the round starts, you can just call back Killer Queen and you're back to a neutral situation. So the move could be used for that too. Anyway, I wanted to make Bites the Dust more than just some really long annoying cutscene. I wanted to make some way you could really interact with it so it really feels like you're playing around with unique stand abilities and I think that's something a new Jojo fighter really needs to nail. And now Leone Abakio. Abakio has not really been able to show off his abilities as a Jojo fighter yet. I mean he's not really the fighting type. We haven't really been able to see what he can do in an actual battle besides maybe the Man in the Mirror arc, but I think there's a lot of untapped potential here for interesting interactions. Think about his ability. He has the ability to replay anything that has happened in the past to in that location. Translating this to a fighting game, he essentially has a second person that can do anything he has done in the past and anything his opponent has done in the past. Not only does this give the opponent essentially two opponents to worry about at the same time, but it also gives Abakyo a pseudo copy ability. So here's what I'm proposing. You know that recording and replaying function in training mode? Yeah, give that to Abakio, but let him use it in an actual match. That would be interesting. Let him record a short segment of something either him or his opponent does and then replay it that will through his stand. This could give some really interesting setups, block strings, and combos. Like, let's say you do an overhead, record it, then in the block string replay the overhead and then do a low when it hits for an unblockable. He can also use it to extend combos, make block strings safer. It can essentially open up many more possibilities for him, especially since he can also record and replace something that his opponent does. So let's say that Abakio starts recording, Chitara does Aura Aura, Abakio can now replay that on his stand and use Aura Aura without any frame data consequences on himself, such as recovery and startup, and he can even move while his stand is doing Aura Aura. This could make Abakio's pressure very scary considering you just gave him a lockdown assist. Essentially, you're giving him the ability to make any one of your moves or his moves into an assist. However, I think Abakio's weakness would be an over-reliance on this mechanic. Let's make it so that he doesn't have very many tools on his own. After all, all, he isn't supposed to, he isn't much of a fighter. Let's say that he can't really convert off his one overhead, or that he doesn't have much off his own low sweep, that he needs to rely on using his ability a lot to do anything, and that he doesn't have a lot of damage output. It's just an idea, but I really think it's time to give Abakyo some spotlight. And now for some characters that I want to see in a new Jojo fighter, but don't have too much to say on them. Diego Brando. This is my favorite character from part 7, so I definitely want him in. I think there's some possibilities here. Maybe he's able to set up minion dinosaurs, maybe he gets a raptor mode, similar to Eliza in Schoolgirls where he has super armor, I don't know. Okuyasu Nijimura. Okuyasu's ability to erase space could be really cool, maybe he has the ability to erase projectiles, pull the opponent close in to beat zoners, I don't know. But I feel like there's potential here with his ability to control space. Johnny Joestar. I actually like All Star Battle's way of doing the character a lot. I like the ability to switch between horse and no horse, and I like the level up mechanic, so yeah, bring him back and adapt that playstyle. Except make him maybe a little more mobile and tricky, especially with Act 2 and 3's abilities. I feel like he's that kind of character where he's gonna be all over the screen shooting at you from everywhere. If it makes sense, make him like Yosuke from Persona 4 Arena but staying in one place. It sounds kinda weird, but I think with Act 3, Johnny could pull it off. So I disagree with this article, and I think that JoJo's could be a perfect fit for a fighting game as long as it's able to make each stand user unique and each stand interactive enough so that it feels like you're really playing around with a unique tool. A new JoJo game is gonna have to be a lot more freeform and interactive like how Heritage was. I think a game like that would be a huge success. Anyway, I just want a new JoJo game. Do you think I'm wrong and that I suck balls? Do you have any ideas of your own for a new JoJo fighter? Let me know and discuss it in the comments. Yo, yo, what's up? It's me, Knuckles the Echidna. Uh, you know what character I want in a new JoJo game? I want, uh, uh, I want, I want Hazamata from part four. Now that would be really cool. What? Stop laughing at me. All right, let's see you block these puppet mix-ups, okay? We'll see who, we'll see who be laughing.